Hey dudes, what's going on? David here. Have you ever wondered how to unlock your true potential and run injury free all while getting faster while running at the same heart rate? I know I have. Well, today we're diving into the secrets of the big yellow book of endurance training and racing and how it will improve your running. This book revealed three surprising things that improved my running and will give you a whole new perspective that will revolutionize the way that you approach your training. You see, when we run, our heart rate rises. It's normal. And for anyone who has worn a heart rate monitor, you will know it all too well. But have you ever stopped to consider what the in increase in heart rate really means? I know I have. It turns out that the rise in heart rate is a powerful indicator of our body's physiology, physiology, response to exercise whether we're walking running cycling rowing or doing any other endurance activity our heart rate tells us how hard our body is working to maintain the same power output this brings us to two different modes of exercise intensity power-based exercise and heart rate based exercise power-based exercise focuses on maintaining a specific power output like running at a particular pace or cycling at a specific speed while this approach has its benefits, there's something crucial that it overlooks. Enter cardiac drift. You might have heard of this term before. It's the observed rise in heart rate during a run with a constant power output. What does this actually mean? Many dismiss it as a casual observation with little value. However, it holds the key to unlocking our body's true potential when we're running. Imagine this. What if we shifted our focus from power output to heart rate? What if we maintained a steady heart rate throughout our run? The heart rate based approach allows us to track how our body tires in response to exercise. It reveals vital information about fat burning, meta metabolic response and overall physiological commitment. I know I'm saying it wrong, but that's just how <laughs> I can. I'm having a hard time with that word. By monitoring our heart rate, we can measure fatigue, one of the most crucial factors in sports and endurance training. Fatigue affects our pace, our speed, our movement, our economy, and overall performance. And it's a metric that truly matters. Think about running a marathon. You know, as fatigue sets in, your pace starts to decrease. That decrease is linked to blood markers of muscle damage. So measuring and managing fatigue becomes essential. So how do we assess fatigue? By comparing changes in heart rate and power output we gain valuable insight. And this information helps us understand factors like, like stress hormones response and recovery requirements and more. And it's a comprehensive approach to optimize our exercise benefits and overall well-being. Now imagine the possibilities if we could regularly measure our heart rate while we exercise. We could fine tune our workouts, reduce our fatigue, improve our endurance and unlock our true potential as a runner. It's a game changer for everyone from beginner exercising, competitive athletes. Here's a little side note for y'all. When running in warmer climates, your body has to work harder. So you get tired quicker. And as your heart rate rises, as your body works harder to keep you running, either you slow down or your heart rate rises. So how do you improve cardiac drift while running when it's so important for maintaining your performance and your endurance? Well. Here are some tips to help you reduce your cardiac drift and enhance your running efficiency. Train your aerobic system. Perform regular aerobic exercises like long, slow distance runs or steady state runs and slowly increase your weekend long run. These workouts really helped me improve my cardiovascular fitness by allowing my heart to pump more efficiently, efficiently and reducing cardiac drift. Monitor your heart rate. Use a heart rate monitor to track your heart rate during runs. Keep your heart rate within the desired training zone for aerobic conditioning. And this zone typically is around 70 to 80% of your maximum heart rate. So by staying within the range, you can minimize the cardiac drift. This is a big one. Stay hydrated. Proper hydration is crucial for maintaining cardiovascular function. Drink water before, during, and after your runs to prevent dehydration, which can contribute to cardiac drift. Don't forget this and make sure you are including electrolytes in your water. So for me, it's time to shift our perspective, embrace the power of heart rate, unlock the secrets of your running, 
and let's revolutionize your workouts, optimize our performance, and together, look, I think we can embark on a journey that will change the way you train and elevate your fitness to new heights. So are you ready to unleash your full potential? Let's dive in and discover the incredible world of heart rate training and endurance training. Let's dive into the second secret that I found out of this book. Muscle fatigue is massively important to pay attention to because if you have tired muscles, your running economy, your gait, things are gonna be kind of broken. I was broken for a number of years until I figured this out. And so as my body started to break down, as my muscle uh, started to kind of fall apart, I started to kind of fall apart and I wasn't running straight. Look, your brain wants to look straight ahead at the horizon, okay? And as my body started to break down, I wasn't necessarily running straight anymore. My eyes, my brain was trying to keep the horizon straight, but my body was breaking down and my body started to compensate. My brain was trying to compensate for how my body started to kind of fall apart. And this isn't a good thing. This really affects your running and can cause a lot of injury. Now, again, I didn't understand this at the time, but when I was reading in the book, talking about fatigue and how muscles fatigue and how you can get stronger muscles and the different workouts that you can do, yes, there's all kinds of strength training exercises and I encourage you to, to do those uh, types of exercises. But one of the things is, is if you're an endurance athlete, you're running longer distances, but you know, when you run longer, you do start to break down. So I find that if I keep my heart rate in my MAF zone while I'm running, it's a good way to stay injury free. And now look, it's a number. I mean, you know, everyone's gonna be able to probably run a little bit faster or maybe a little bit slower, but whatever it is, just know that it's real. So pay attention, make sure you don't kind of break down. So some of the tips I would suggest in, in, in doing this is, Okay, you want to work out at least probably two days a week uh, on muscle uh, strength exercises. That would be very helpful. But while you're running, this is where you get muscle fatigue, okay? And for me, the longer distance I go, you have to build up to it. You just can't go out and just smash out some crazy long runs if you haven't trained for it. You have to build yourself up. It's a compounding interest. Over time, you're investing in your body and investing in your well-being and you'll be able to draw upon that while you're out for longer runs. And so if you can gradually do a warm up and then head out for a run, okay? And you, if you can stay within your map zone, fantastic. If there's different types of runs where you're gonna be running faster, that's okay. But you gotta reduce the mileage that you do if you increase your, uh, your speed. So if you're doing, you know, threshold runs or you're doing hill repeats and things like that, you know, maybe you're not running, you know, like long every single day. Like for me, I love to run longer. The longer I run, the better I feel. But I do know if I need to add in some speed work that I need to back that off because again, I don't want to overtrain. Look, I'm no coach, okay? I'm just a middle-aged guy doing my best running just for my well-being, my health, and to set some PRs along the way. And I just want to stay out of the injury box. That's my main thing. So the brain is the boss of our body. It controls everything we do. Taking care of our brain is the most important factor in order to prevent muscle fatigue and perform at our best, right? There are three key things that you can do to help your brain reduce muscle fatigue. And this one is common sense, it's stay healthy. Be healthy, be a healthy athlete. It's important because when the body is healthy, it can perform better and it fatigues less. It means like eating better food, diet, right? Reducing the stress and training in a balanced way. Our mental and emotional health also affects fatigue. So it's important to be positive and manage your emotions. Training our muscles and our nerves. We need to train our muscles and nerves to prevent fatigue. That will eventually start to feel. This involves doing exercises that work all parts of our muscles, starting with slow warm-ups and gradually increasing our speed. It also helps us, it also helps all of our muscles. 
We also need to train our aerobic system, which gives us the energy for the long races. And this can make us faster and more efficient. Have a good gait. If we don't have a good gait, it affects how we walk, how we run. And it's important for reducing fatigue because if the gait is not right, we use more energy and it makes us tired or faster. And with muscle fatigue, it also affects our gait. So it's important to keep yourself in the healthy and fit mindset and physical shape. Sometimes we may need help from a healthcare professional to improve our gait, but you know, you just gotta pay attention to what's going on in our body so we can kind of keep that at bay. Now, here's a checklist of things that you can do to help. You wanna warm up and you wanna cool down properly before and after workouts, right? You wanna monitor your heart rate, use techniques and skills to avoid excessive fatigue or pain during your runs. Uh, take rest days or choose to walk over a run. Uh, you want to get enough sleep and you wanna manage your mental well-being and your emotional state. Spend time in the sun and protect your skin and eyes at the same time. You wanna wear comfortable clothing and footwear. Look, I like to walk around barefoot, sometimes on the grass on the infield, and it also helps. You want to increase your pace over time. You wanna make sure you have energy left at the end of a race for that one final push. By taking care of your brain and focusing and following these guidelines, we can reduce the muscle fatigue and perform better in our training and our racing. Our brains control our body, so when we keep it healthy, we train it well, we can achieve some of our best performances. Now here's a note on drinking water. It helps to keep you cool and it manages your core temperature. If you don't pay attention to your hydration, your heart rate training is going to be much harder and you will not make as much progress. Trust me when I say this, I'm not the greatest when I go out for my morning runs of six miles or 10K. I normally have a cup of water when I wake up in the morning and then head out the door for my day. This is something I need to work on if I am to see my potential as a runner and I know that I'm not the only one. Number three, training diary. Each of us has important stories to tell and if you keep a training diary, part of your story is written in it. Like any story, you often have a good idea of what may happen next. Like, is it time to add anaerobic training? Are you ready for competition? Are you getting stale? Your diary should include everything from total time to heart rates, each workout, which course you trained on, on what day, how far you went. It may mention the weather, how you felt, along with your fears and your dreams and goals and aspirations. Most importantly, your diary should include a chart of all your math tests. Neatly plot them out so a quick glance will give you the last few months of progress. Looking back over the past few months of your diary, you can be more objective and assess your progress. Check for consistency and gradual increases in total time each of each workout, indicating increased fitness. Write down your goals. Look, traditionally, most athletes record distance and pace of the workout. For example, five miles at 820 average pace or a 30 mile ride averaging 22 miles an hour. However, it's best to emphasize total and heart rate training. However, it's better to emphasize total time and heart rate. And these are for two reasons. One, measuring only distance, total training volume will diminish as over time as aerobic speed improves. This results in the completion of the same course in less time. When measuring on, number two, when measuring only distance, some athletes feel pressured to complete in a certain weekly mileage. It is a way to compare themselves to other athletes, training partners, or younger versions of themselves, or even compare to some article written in a sports magazine that recommends a certain mileage. Heart rate is a very useful parameter than distance because it relates to the quality rather than the quantity of the activity. When you combine all of that together, I think it really shows you heart rate training can be very beneficial. Who doesn't want to be able to go out for a 60 minute run and after a couple of weeks you realize that that 60 minute run you're actually increasing your mileage at the same heart rate. That's a win to me. Everything I've talked about, everything that I've shared, this video that talks about Maffetone Meth training is going to take your training to the next level. And why not? Because I think it's cool.